Posting date is not within your range of allowed posting dates in general journal line, journal template name, general journal batch name, default line number 10,000. Uh, okay. Welcome to Don't Just Tell Me What's Wrong. Help me instead. Hey guys, sorry for the uh, the back air, bad acting. Um, this is a topic that has been uh, top of mind for me lately. Uh, software telling you what's wrong, but not helping you make it right. Um, it's something that I think all of us are guilty of working with Business Central and the, the example from just a moment ago is clear it's clear that Microsoft is certainly also guilty of this um, we got tons of error messages we got very precise error messages that are very very good at telling you exactly what is wrong but not giving you a single piece of advice on how to fix it um, and I have I, I, I want to I want to change that and and the only place you can change stuff you know change come from within um, so I I I, I have looked at um, actually let, let me show you before we get too deep into that so here we were and the error message we got was of course posting date is not within your range of allowed posting dates and um, Oh, you might say, oh, Eric, that's because you have a user setup. Even though, you know, what is user setup? That's something different from users and very confusing for a lot of users. So that's actually not helping, but that is correct. I do have a uh, posting range here. So I go in and delete that. I post again and I do want to post a journal. and I get the error once more, but I just removed it. Then someone says, hey, Eric, that is because in your general ledger setup, you have specified something. Yeah, that's correct. So now I'm able to post. Hooray. But the error message we got gave me no clue as a user to what I needed to do. It didn't even tell me whether it was the one setup or the other setup that was responsible. It just tell me you're wrong and then goodbye. It, I think we can do better and, and, and I think I can do better and I want to do better. And the, the app that I really want, the, the app and maybe the app that has inspired this whole it's not a rant. I don't think that a rant is the wrong word, but but this uh, this little this little video uh, chat here is, um, is is our app, the, the SharePoint connector. Um, quite a popular app for, for for Business Central. You enable your uh, you 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 enable the connection between folders in SharePoint and and data in in Business Central and. You, we cover every table and it's it's cool um, but the setup is very flexible uh, because we have found a lot of different scenarios that we want to cover uh, but in reality the flexibility of the setup is also the the piece that it's that's guilty of making it way more complicated that it perhaps could be if we only supported one single scenario. Um, so let, 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 actually, let me just show you what I'm, I'm working on uh, because uh, here is some of the setup fields. Um, and, and one of the very, 
So part of setting the SharePoint Connect up is that you create an app registration for SharePoint in Azure Portal, where you get a client ID and you get a client secret, uh, and you have to put the client ID in uh, a client ID and the secret into the app. Great. Um, the client ID. Sometimes Microsoft changes what it's called. So something it's called an application ID or application client ID. So so there's a, a few different ways that this can show up. Uh, but the client ID is a GUID. The client secret is a string of random characters. Um, so what I thought, because what I've seen that then people got, you know, the wrong field in the wrong, uh, the wrong value in the wrong field or the, the part with the secrets that you need a client ID and not the secret ID. So right next to the secret value is a secret ID. And a secret ID looks like a good, just like a client ID. So it's really, really fair mistake to make by users that, ah, oh, I got the client ID, now I get the client, uh, the secret ID, but it's not. Um, so I actually created a little function here. It's, I think this is rather cool. Is this a GUID, the function is called. Um, and it's a try function. And it's a very simple function. We tr get a string and then we see if we can assign it to a GUID or not. Uh, since this is a try function, it will not return an, an error. It will just return false, uh, but true if, if, if it succeeds. So in, in case of the client ID, um we kind of allow users to type something wrong because you maybe suddenly something has changed uh, in in oauth and, and there there is a different format of stuff but we're going to test to see what they put in it uh, looks like a good if it does not look like a good we're going to tell them something and this is still you know still getting fine-tuned this doesn't look right Client ID should be a GUID. You might have copied the wrong value from the asset portal. Look for percentage one, and percentage one is the is application client ID because otherwise we have to separate that piece out as a string so it won't get translated. Um, but that's just the easiest way of, of putting it in to uh, to this one. So now we're kind of helping the customer say, hey, it doesn't look right. Uh, this should be a GUID, and, and maybe we should even have some sort of a uh, how to recognize a GUID. Um, but that that's one example. The other example here is is the uh, is the client secret uh, because like eight of eight out of ten or four out of five uh, setup mistakes is people copying the client secret ID and not the client secret value. So the important part is that the value is not a GUID. It's a random string of characters. Uh, so if uh, I use the exact same function again, again, so is this a GUID? So I look to see that if what they typed into this field, which should never hold a GUID, happens to actually be a GUID, then I want to tell them that this doesn't look right. The client secret should be a string of random characters. You might have copied the percent two uh, and not the value from Azure look for percent one. And percent one is the secret value and percent percent two or is the uh, the secret ID. So user did something where I'm trying to tell them, hey, it looks like this is not correct, but here's what you need to do. Um, other examples are constructing the callback URL, uh, which can be complicated because you, if you're running on-prem and you're, how your URL looks, then the auto-generated URL is only good for the cloud. Uh, so there might be a bit of a, uh, fine tuning in, in the callback URL, but it has to contain uh, page equals 7031950. Sorry. Um, so if that piece is missing, then I know for sure that this URL is not valid. So I'm going to test for it and tell them hey, 
make sure that you actually append this if that's the case. And um, there's the there's there's more like like this, um, but but hopefully you get what I'm talking about here is that actually it's not enough to tell your user what is wrong. You gotta help them. Uh, you gotta guide them. Um, maybe there need to be you know be links uh, so so when you issue an error you can also issue an, an internal link uh, that, would, that would be rather awesome so go here to fix it uh, kind of approach um, but but the, the software is at at certain certain points of time and now I'm using my own app as example I just used the base app to begin with but but there are so many examples of this. Test field is perhaps the worst thing that ever has happened to usability for, for Business Central on, on NAB because you just, this field does not have the value it should have. Uh, or this field cannot be blank, but not telling you what should be in the field, uh, stuff like that. Um, so, I know this kind of sounds like a rant. Uh, it, it's not. It's really a uh, you know uh, self uh, healing process that I think I need to go through all my apps and make sure that they're more friendly. And and if you're running one of my apps and and it's not friendly, so you let me know in comments below, and I really really want to fix it. Uh, I think we can make the the entire ecosystem way more. Uh, approachable, way more nice to new users coming aboard by making these things friendly. There's also the option of of using uh, notifications for this. Uh, right now, I'm just using messages. There's, I might change it into notifications at some point. Um, it looks like right now that users are kind of ignoring notifications. There have been so many. Uh, irrelevant notifications that I think users are getting blind to them. Um, and that, let me know in the comments below what you think about notifications. Should stuff like this purely be notifications or or sh should I go harder with actual errors? Right now I'm just using messages saying, like, hey, this kind of looks like it's wrong. Um, let me know what you think and, and, and comments below. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Stay safe and improve your error messages in Business Central. See ya.